Have you ever wanted to sit in the control room of a nuclear power submarine? Well, you know, after watching the hunt for Red October and Crimson Tide, I've wanted to, but the Navy won't let you do that, and, and I can understand why. However, there may be a way, sort of. Let's take a look at the Naval Undersea Museum. The Naval Undersea Museum is located in Keyport, Washington. This modern building, built in 1995, houses the museum. By the entrance is the sail off the nuclear submarine USS Sturgeon, SSN 637. The first display area is dedicated to the world in which the submarine operates, the undersea world. Here, water temperature, tides, currents, and ocean floors are explained. Also, aquatic animals are featured. This is the operating environment of the submarine. Prior to the invention of the underwater boat or submarine, mines known as torpedoes were the undersea weapon of choice. When Commodore David Farragut in Mobile Bay exclaimed, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead, the torpedo he was referring to is what we now refer to as a mine. Interestingly enough, the motorized and controlled torpedo was invented before the practical submarine. The Englishman, Robert Whitehead, invented the modern torpedo in 1866. Compressed air fueled the reciprocating engine to provide motivation through the water. The later switch to steam also drove a reciprocating engine prior to the replacement by a steam turbine. Electric motors with battery packs were also used. The adaption of the gyroscope in the late 1800s greatly improved maneuverability of the torpedo. These torpedoes, first used by the Austrian Navy in warfare, were launched from small ships. Although submarines are known to have existed in the 18th century, they did not become practical until the late 19th century. In 1775, the first military submarine was the Turtle, invented by David Bushnell. According to the museum, the first submarine to sink an enemy vessel was the CSS H.L. Hunley in 1864. But it was not a true submarine because it did not have apparatus for the crew to breathe underwater. With the advent of diesel electric power in the late 19th century, submarine production increased rapidly. A number of nations had built practical military submarines by the time of the First World War. Germany was very effective in its use of submarines in warfare. Between the wars, submarine technology increased speed and range of underwater boats. Germany depended on its submarine fleet to rule the Atlantic and Mediterranean. The brass-headed German G7E torpedo is responsible for sending thousands of tons of ships and ship's cargo to David Jones Locker. And that's the U.S. Navy's Mark 18 torpedo used by the Americans during World War II. Submarine commanders distrusted it due to its design flaws. It frequently would circle the target rather than hitting it. However, after the design flaws were addressed, the American submarines ruled the Pacific against the Japanese. Although technical advances continued in submarine development, torpedoes were overshadowed by the guided missile as a submarine weapon. Shortly after the nuclear-powered submarine was introduced in 1955, the intercontinental missile was added to the arsenal of the nuclear-powered submarine. That missile reached perfection in the SLBM, Submarine Launched Ballistic Missile. The MIRV, M-I-R-V, the Multiple Independently Targeted Reentry Vehicle, is the ultimate ballistic missile. These large missiles with as many as 14 torpedo warheads are delivered to high altitude by a missile and are dispersed and guided to targets below. These large missile carrying submarines have the ability to deliver unbelievable destruction and are called boomers. Not all nuclear submarines 
drones are this big and powerful. Some, such as the USS Craneling SSN-614, were fast attack submarines, smaller, and with a crew of 12 officers and 95 men. This is the control center of that nuclear submarine. The decisions for the submarine's operation were made here. Notice the lack of chairs that would have normally been in front of the instruments and controls. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19 restrictions, we were unable to enter this space and stand in the control room of a nuclear-powered submarine. There are other displays of underwater research and rescue vehicles in the museum, but pale in comparison to the undersea warfare section. When in Keyport on Puget Sound, check out the Naval Undersea Museum.